Alrighty then. I'll let you in on the plan for the engine cow. We've got our buck made up. So now it's just a matter of working out how to put, make all the sheets and stuff like that. Um, some of it's still secret. So secret that I don't even know. So just, just bear with me. We'll nut it out as we travel along. Um, obviously it's aluminium. It's not composite. We don't do composite here at all. I think I've got some plastic. Uh, the joystick's plastic. The grip, that's it. Uh, everything's aluminium. So we're sticking with that. 5005 is the material spec that I'll be using, the aluminium. Um, I think it's about 25,000, 30 maybe, something like that. Uh, it's easier to work with for the, composite, uh, for the compound curves and stuff like that. Uh, I'd love to make it in one big piece, but I won't. I'll break it down into smaller pieces and rivet them all together, uh, just because it's easier for me to work. And um, especially as I'm making it up as I go along. I've got a basic idea, I'll run you through what, I'm, what, the, what the plan is, and uh, we'll go from there. So I've started making a bit of a plan as to how we're going about adding material to this. So this is the top half of the, of the engine cowling, it's gonna split through here, and then that's the intake. So, and um, that's the bottom piece down there. So I think we'll do, smaller bite-sized pieces and we'll start at the bottom and work our way up this way and around the top and then we'll do the front because that's where the skin's going to sit on top of that anyway and that's how that's how it'll look on the airframe so we'll start here at this bit so we need a skin going from here to here and that's the firewall so it's going to be a sharp fold there and then there'll be a cut out here with a little bit of a flare. It'll go along. Obviously the curve is this part here and I'm gonna cheat a little bit. And um, from here, I'm gonna cut that piece out. So it'll help me shape a smaller piece in here. And then we'll have this piece will come down this way later on. And then I can add sort of a stiffness system through here as well. But that's what we're gonna start here and one on the other side, and then we'll do this side here. This is probably the least amount of shape in any of the panels, but it's still got a big warp there. So we'll do that, and then that'll be a split where we'll screw there and have the top half pop off, and then we'll have one panel here, like that. That's the plan, and that's the theory. So we'll see how we go. So for this piece, I've got my little piece cut out, ready to go. So flat sheet there, turned into something funky. Uh, firewall goes, it's pretty well flat here, and then there's a fold here. So on the fuselage, we can see we're trying to match this bottom corner down here. So, so this is coming down the firewall. There's the fold, but it's not 90 degrees. It's pretty close, but it's not. And then that'll go over to the middle piece here. We'll worry about that in a bit. But that's what we're trying to match down here. So that's that. Um, but at the top, at the front, is a big curve right here. So the idea is it'll start off as a, as a bit of a fold here. It'll, trans, it'll transition to a curve here, up the front. And then from about you can see there's a flat edge there. So from about here, that's where the funky shape starts to happen. Um, but until then, we've got to work out all of the bottom piece. But I want, my aim is to have this go up a certain way, like a, as a fold, and then it'll transition into the curved part. Trust me, I can see it in my head. We just got to make it happen for realsies. We'll give her a go. Okay, so this is the basic shape that we've done. This is the bottom corner. I've just folded on the, on the edge of the bench there like that, just to get a rough go. And that's the bottom of the firewall. And that's how that sits like that. And then roughly, that's what it's gonna look like. 
that's the air egg, air exit, and then this is another compound curve that's going to come from this upper skin. Um, at the moment, as it sits there now, we've got a massive gap up the top here, so we either have to shrink all of this area to roll that down onto here, or um, now I don't want to do that because it'll leave marks on the skin and I want to polish it. So the other option that we've got is if you press in here like that to make that touch, you can see that this area here is, needs to be raised out. So we can use the English wheel for that. I'll mark out an area to start working. You've got to be careful when we start to work that if you concentrate in this one area, you'll end up like a blister here and we want to have the shape over the whole piece. So we need to work the whole skin, but concentrate in this area to raise it up as much as we want. That's looking a bit better. It's starting to sit good there. It's a big, it's a big curve. It's a slight curve, but it's just enough. I need a little bit of work. I don't know if you can see. There's a bit of a gap there. A bit hard to hold three things at once, but um, it's coming along. Okay, it's a bit difficult to show, but there is a gap there. We on the ends of the ruler there. You can see. So we've got a little curve going this way and that way in that area, but, and you can see, I want to make sure that there's no lump like that. So we haven't really worked, haven't worked it much, but the results are starting to look pretty cool. So, so we got that. There's still a little bit of a gap this way, but it's a bit, it's not as bad as this because I haven't, I need my other hand to hold it in the right spot. So, um, and that edge is quite flat there. So we're actually almost there on this piece. And then up here, I'll just shrink that a little bit more to make, to make that touch properly. But we haven't really worked much. You can see there's only, only a slight curve, but over a big area. And um, we're nearly there. So the idea, I've drawn that extra line here now as a bit of a guide as to where I need to work more. Um, and you can see where the impressions that I've left here. So basically we're rolling it back and forth this way. We'll go all the way around here and up here. And then we'll spin it this way. And we'll roll it that way up and down. And that'll lift more up that way. Um, and then we have to feather it all back out again as well. And Sometimes you can do the diagonals as well. I've seen that a fair bit, but at the moment I don't want to do that. Maybe later we might have to, um, just to get all the little ripples out of it. But um, basically that's what we're doing here, back and forth, back and forth, and keep them all close together. Put a little bit of pressure on it. See, if I just run it through like that, it makes a different, um, it changes the metal differently as opposed to putting a little bit of load on it. That, that raises it up a lot more quickly but it also leaves lines in it too. So it's a bit of a catch 22, just what you want to do and how you feel at the moment. But that's what we're doing. So we've got, it's full clear coat in this part and that's followed the um, rib where I want it. We've got our little bit of a curve. See, I've cheated by cutting out this piece here. So that allows the skin to, to move a little bit. And then I'm gonna make a piece that goes from all the way across the top all the way down and across and like that and it'll have the cut out there now i just got to work on on this section here and then this piece here where the air outlet is so i've got some marks there but we've got to put a bit of a flare on that just to draw the air out of that so um and then probably a little bit more of a clean up here just a little bit there's a few little ripples in there that i don't like but um one down, just about. All right, so I've got my little cutout for the air exit. It's just sitting precariously there at the moment. It's not actually click on. Um, so 
it'll go straight through there and then you've got our radius there but we've got a curve like that so when I go to flare it it's not just gonna be a flare here that the angle is going to constantly change all the way around like that so I want a 20 mil edge and it'll fold up about, oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 degrees or something like that. But we're gonna have to change the, the angle the whole way around. So, how to do that? Um, I've got my edge marked out on the inside because that's the edge that I'll see when I'm working it through the English wheel. I'll use two flat piece, um, flat wheels. So that one's a flat. And then we'll just run him through there and it'll stretch that edge out. It'll stretch this edge out where I want it. And uh, we'll, we'll work it out from there. Watch this face. Isn't that cool? So there's our finished shape. I've got it clicked onto the onto the buck uh, with pilot holes. This skin here will come over the top of this and rivet onto that. Um, there's our cutout for this big piece here. That's going to go all the way around like that. Um, this edge, this skin here will come over and rivet down here. And down there is obviously where the firewall screws on. And there's our air exit with a little flare. All I've got to do now is make another one over here, uh, just like that, but the opposite. So I, I couldn't really use that for templates, um, but I can use that as um, some reference numbers and all that sort of stuff to make it fit on here. So I've got to do that all over again, but opposite. One down, nine skins to go.